Hi besties, how have you all been? Wait, that's, that's, that's not my intro. Hello, I'm Cecilia and welcome back, but let's just address the elephant in the room because yes, I did impulsively chop all my hair off. I literally went to the hairdresser yesterday and I am loving the new cut. And thank you also for all the sweet messages about my hair on Instagram. But anyway, uh, just let's get to the point. <laughs> it is time for another Artist Alley vlog. Woo! This video is a recap of my, spoiler alert, um, awesome time at Fancy Fest, the good or the bad, in Reiswijk um, on the 17th and 18th of February 2024. It is now March 15th as of filming this, this intro, and I know this video is super late, but let me tell you, <laughs> the past month has just been so crazy. I had two cons one after another. I had the Fantasy Fest and Heroes Made in Asia literally the next week. And then a week after HMIA, I literally had the biggest exam of my entire bachelor's degree. So it was, it was stressful. <laughs> I also had some other assignments. And in the meantime, I, I'm also trying to live and live as healthy as possible. So between con prep, shop things, social media management, making art and university library binge hours and of course classes, orchestra projects, sleep, sports and just just life. Aww, you know you guys are right. It was silly to think I could be in three places at once. I feel like I'm only half alive. Like I'm so, so exhausted. <laughs> but there's no use in complaining because this is indeed the life I chose to live. And I am insanely grateful to be able to do all of this. And especially to be myself in all of these vastly different situations. But I do have to learn to manage my time. That leaves me with a bit more breathing room because it's it's kind of been crazy. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the vlog. I shot as many clips as was humanly possible without making myself or especially the people around me extremely uncomfortable during the convention. And just as in the last video, I will first show you the vlog and then come back with like a financial recap for all you curious people. And I thought it'd be fun to show you my best sellers and just some lessons I learned. So, well, let's just jump into it and I will see you in the voiceover. <laughs> Hi, good morning. It's right now 7 a.m. on the 17th of February, the first day of Fancy Fest. And yeah, I just got dressed. Fancy Fest build up starts at 10 a.m. and I need to leave at 9. And there's still a few things I need to do hair and makeup because it is a cosplay event. And even though I do not have a costume, I do want to look presentable. I gotta walk, Baluti. I got to quickly iron my tablecloths and I've got to make food for the entire day. So that is basically it, but first, coffee. Hello, it's me again, and I think it's time for a voiceover. I made a button with my logo that I wore the entire day, and then it was time to get all my suitcases and bags and get to the tram. I was staying at my mom's house for the weekend because it's a really easy trip to the Broodfabriek from where she lives. It's only like an hour train ride or tram ride. When I got there, I and basically all vendors had to wait on the parking spot until the doors opened. And when I got to my table, I basically immediately started building my grid cubes and working on my display. Um, I filmed basically all of it, but the angle was a little bit off because if I work on the front, you only see my back, for which I'm sorry. 
but yeah, I was just putting everything on my display. Um, it's a little bit smaller than I was used to for my previous con, but it actually worked out perfectly. I was really, really, really happy with how my display looked at this convention. It was still like messy art studio vibes as you guys are used to from me, but I think it was also easy to navigate and I think a lot of people had fun looking over my booth so that was awesome. I didn't film any content with her also because I want to protect her privacy if she does not want to be in this video but this is also when I met my table booth mate, I don't know how to call it. Her handle is at Zazuo and she is an animation student but she does some awesome awesome character art and she also makes wood burning engraving things it's really really awesome so please check her out and do me a favor and go follow her she had also been to a previous rendition of the fantasy fest so it was really nice to have someone to tell me what was expected and what i had to do in certain situations and I have to say, I met so many more amazing people, like it was not just the people around me, it was the entire artist alley that came to say hi, and it was awesome to meet so many people. Of course, this was my first ever real artist alley because on my previous convention I was basically the only artist because I went to the wrong convention, as you can see in my previous vlog. So it was awesome to meet people like me. Um, yeah, and it really boosted my confidence before the convention even started. And here's my finalized little happy place. I loved it so much. Here's just a turnaround shot of how it feels to be behind a booth when a convention opens. Then I made a proud shot of my sales sheet because I literally had more customers within the first half hour of this convention than in the first day of the Kriya weekend. Then I just have a lot of like spherical impression clips because what else can you do because I was alone so I had to stay behind my table basically all the time. People were dancing around and playing around at the stage because the stage was almost literally next to the artist alley so it was awesome to see people there. This was just a faraway shot from where my booth was located and yeah, more people dancing in the background. Um, it was so cute. <laughs> it's funny because I'm an extreme introvert but seeing people dance here and just talking to people at this convention because they're all crazy nerds, you know, I felt like joining them so much. <laughs> This was a shot at the end of the day when it was kind of less busy and there was a concert going on on stage so a lot of people, I mean the people that were left were at the stage so basically I had no customers. So I had time to film a little tour of my booth so I hope you enjoy that. As you can see we have cards, sticker sheets, bookmarks and everything hung up. Um, I have bookmarks, key change. this is my little basket with key change. I have baskets with little sticker sheets, stickers everywhere. This is my sticker tray, I had just an insane amount of stickers and I didn't even bring all my designs. Um, but yeah, I have a bunch of prints hung up. And in this basket that I just glossed over there are mystery bags. Then I have buttons, there's the basket with big buttons. I have some letter writing sets, more sticker sheets, my business cards, um, a gacha ball machine, cards, yeah, I know, just, just a lot of stuff. <laughs> and yeah, um, bookmarks it really well, which are in that left green basket. And I think it looks really colorful and awesome. And then I packed up my booth for the night in cloths. On day two, I didn't have to build up my booth, so I was able to sleep in a little bit, which was awesome because an entire day from like 9 to 6 at a convention is one of the most exhausting things I've ever experienced, however fun it is. But I was back again in the tram and this time I decided to film walking into the Brotfabrik to give you kind of an impression of how that looked. Um, so yeah, I was just walking through the gates. It was an extremely rainy day So we were kind of scared that less customers would show up because of the rain, but that was not it was not that bad. So that's good 
So you had to walk through a few hallways to get to the convention and then this was the entrance. Everyone was kind of getting in for the day so a lot of booths were still covered. But yeah, you first get through the little food section with sweets and candy. And then here were just some businesses selling pre-made things and selling a lot of cosplay. Um, I saw some Squishmallows, yes, yes. Um, here was a little area where you could do VR gaming. And right now I'm walking through the Horika section, but I'm going to... Um, I'm going to the artist alley. The artist alley is here on the right and my booth is the only one packed up still. <laughs> it's so funny how even after just a day your booth kind of feels like home. It kind of feels like getting home when you open your booth is really funny. Um, I was really happy to be back and I was excited for the day. This day was full of concerts by bands that I personally didn't know, but a lot of people did seem to know, so that was really cool. Uh, apparently there was a cool band. They played really well, so that's super nice. I heard from other vendors that the Sunday was better for them and the Saturday was kind of slow. For me it was pretty comparable. I think the Sunday was a little bit slower for me because there were just less people or there were people that I had already seen on Saturday. But there were also a lot of people that came on Saturday and then decided to only buy things on Sunday. Um, yeah, a lot of people dancing. It was really, really awesome to see so many people dance. <laughs> I really wanted to join them. And then at the end of the day, um, my brother came together with one of my best friends and they came to help me get everything back into suitcases and to get back home and that was awesome even though I was exhausted um, I was just shaking this keychain because it basically almost sold out <laughs> so that was awesome and I didn't really film anything else when my friends came because yeah I mean <laughs> it was kind of awkward to film when they were there but overall, this was just such a positive experience. I was so happy. It just, it's so awesome to see so many people happy and to make people happy with your art. It's really, it's really a treat. So I just want to say thank you to every single one of you who came to my booth, who said nice things, who bought something, who was just nice and happy. I haven't met a single annoying or angry person, so that was really awesome. And a big thank you to every artist around me. So it was so awesome. So that was all the clips I had from the convention itself. And now for all you curious, nosy people, let's talk finances and costs and income. I think we can gloss over the costs pretty quickly. The table for Fancy Fest was not that expensive. It was 124 euros 50. I didn't have any hotel costs as it's only like half an hour travel from my mom's house to Reiswijk. And I used public traffic, which I can do on a discount because I am a student. The material costs were also not that high since I had a lot of products left over from the Kea weekend. See my last vlog. And as you may have seen in my last studio vlog, I did make some new products, but I was lucky enough to have my button machine gifted to me for Christmas. And I am very grateful for my family for providing me with a new product. So thank you so much. And I think my usual paper type costs were about like 60 euros. And then I did have to refill my printer ink for the first time in a year and that set me back another 20, I think. So in total that gives us 80 euros in material costs. And that means that in total I spent about 204 euros 50 on this entire convention. Then we get to the exciting part, which is the income. During conventions I keep like a sales sheet, so I will put that up on the screen. On Saturday I had 36 customers in total and I broke even with the table cost about 5.30 p.m. I made a total of 167 euros. On Sunday it was significantly less busy but I still had 31 customers and I did make 129 euros. So that is a total of 296 euros in sales and if we subtract the table costs and the material costs from that 
we get to a profit of 91 euros 50 which is awesome for my second convention ever so financially i would say this con was also a big success i know that there is artists who literally make like hundreds or even thousands of euros of profit each convention i am not there yet but i hope to get there one day of course but that will take time practice and a lot more products anyway i thought it would be fun to talk about my best sellers to show you kind of what products did really well at this convention i think it would also be fun to do that for future conventions and then we can kind of see if there's differences between different conventions um which would be fun so when i look at my sales sheet i see that most sales were the three plus one free mini buttons these are the mini buttons i think everyone kind of chose different ones because people like different things but um for sure this design the book witch design did really well in general everything that i had with black cats sold out really quickly <laughs> people really like black cats <laughs> big buttons also did really well but people only bought one of them because you could buy one big button for the same price as three small ones but this one did really well it's also a black cat and also the book witch design but i was really happy they did well because I love these so much, it was so much fun to make them, so it's amazing to see my work pay off. Then I can't show you this because they all sold out and I haven't made new ones yet, but the oopsie tote bags or tote bags with a little bit of defects did really well because I sold them for I think 3 euros each, so they were on the cheap side and people grabbed those very quickly. I had also the black cat designs on them, but also like fairy tale designs and my own artwork. Um, and it's awesome to see people love them that much. And lastly, because this is a convention for fantasy oriented people and most of them are readers, bookmarks did really well. Again, the book witch one did really well, but also the book wizard one. And I made two new designs, which are these fairy tale designs. You have like, let me, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we have this one and the little one with the gnome and i was really scared they wouldn't sell at all because it's original art and most people just really like either black cats or fan art but they actually did really well so that gave me kind of a confidence boost for my own original art so thank you guys so much for buying them and lastly i made oopsie mystery bags um i also made regular product mystery bags those didn't do as well but the oopsie ones went pretty quickly. Um, it's fun to see how much people love these. Um, I'm interested to see if they do well online as well, if I put them up on my shop. But yeah, a lot of people grabbed these and had really positive reactions to it, so that's amazing. And then I did have a very cool Zelda keychain which did sell out, but I only had three of them, so I was not surprised. I can't show you them right now, but I'll put a picture on the screen somewhere because they sold out, so I don't have them anymore. But the other keychains, key change, uh, which were these, um, they didn't sell that well. I was hoping they'd do better, but a lot of people seemed to think they were either too big to put on a bag or they didn't have like any relation to the design. So, so yeah. And then surprisingly, stickers and sticker sheets went way less fast than I thought they would. I still had some decent sales when it came to stickers, but um, yeah, again, I didn't... Most of my stickers are Animal Crossing or Zelda stickers, and a lot of people seem to love to buy original art at this convention, so my black cats did really well, and um, my fairy tale designs did really well, so that's fun to see because spoiler if i um uh, if i what's the word vergelijken if i compare it <laughs> if i compare it to the heroes made in asia the week later i almost exclusively sold fan art so that's a really fun difference to see and lastly, I promise we're almost done. I promised I'd talk about some lessons I learned. I think the biggest lesson I learned this convention is that I am massively underpricing. I went to see what other artists did and I also brought some money to buy their stickers because I am kind of a sticker hoarder myself. <laughs> and most people sell stickers for like 250 or even 3 euros. Um, I sell them for 150 each and give the fourth one free if you buy three. Um, 
and yeah i maybe i should experiment with higher prices for the new next convention because of course that would basically almost double my income as well and yeah i charge only three euros for an a4 print and i know that some people charge literally 15 euros for that what i usually do is i charge for the material cost but i don't charge for my art and the work that went into you know the artist process and maybe i should start doing that because underpricing is not good <laughs> both for myself and my customers because i might show myself as less valuable than i I am so that is my biggest lesson but it's also kind of scary because I know for instance the oopsie tote bags did really well because people needed a bag and my bags are really cheap so then they bought a cheap bag I still think if I sell them for more than three euros for example six euros I'm still cheaper than most people so I, I will have to experiment with prices but it's it's really hard to price your products correctly I've been struggling with this ever since I started my small business but it's really educational to compare to other artists that were at the venue. And the last lesson for myself is that I need to bring more of products that I know in advance are gonna do well. You know, I can only do that after doing a couple cons and evaluating what did well and what did not, but um, I will definitely keep that in mind for the next convention. And I think that was it, so cue the Wii Shop theme. I had so much fun on this convention and it's always awesome to be able to make this video afterward and kind of relive everything is really fun so thank you so much for watching i'm so sorry it was so late but you know life gets in the way of course i am obliged to ask if you would please subscribe because we're almost at 300 subscribers and it would be awesome to one day hit that 1k and be able to get monetized but in the meantime every single comment warms my heart every single like boosts my self-confidence <laughs> so um thank you so much for interacting with this video and if you did not like it then thanks for sticking to the end and watching anyway <laughs> yes so thank you so much i cannot thank you enough and i know i've said those words way too much so we're gonna skip to the end thanks for watching see you next time and have fun and have a nice day yeah bye hi hello i'm cecilia <coughs> <coughs>